Hello everyone, this is Mohamed from Artila and today we're covering the onboarding session number two, which is about the project management. Let's dive into it. So I load up here. When you start Artila, it will start on this screen. And the project panel is right here on the left. So if I click, I will now have loaded the uh, project panel and you can see all the projects that you have. Um, I have about 950 projects. So it, when you start to have many projects, then you can use the pagination. But also what you can use to find your projects are these little hamburger menu here where you can filter. For example, I want everything that pertains to Google and then it will filter here. So you can play around with these filters. You can also filter at the URL level and you can add multiple uh, filters. And once you filter, you can also order per URL up and down alphabetical order or per name by clicking the top tab, it would reorder the list. So these are the few options that you have to browse through um, your list of projects. And you have right here at the bottom left, a queue sec session, section, sorry. This is when you're running multiple projects, they will appear here and you will have their status and how far they, they have been and so on. Uh, right now I have no project running, that's why it's empty. So this, this is the very basic of the project panel. Now what we can look at um, is that beyond filtering and organizing and, uh, and looking at, you can have more details right here. If you click on the general tab, you can extend this tab and you can see here that few new columns will appear like the project ID, which can become important in other sections of, of, the, tra of the software use, but also the type of uh, data set type you have, uh, if it's silent um, and then how many threads and few information like this that you can have in the extended tab right here. Um, now that we have looked at all this, let's look at another section of this project management. So I'll just move my video right here. So this is what we call the option bar. So this bar has a couple of options for each project. So the first option right here is for synchronizing the results of this project with the Google Sheet. So we will cover this later on. It has to go with uh, the connect sheets right here and then you can get all the results saved in Google Sheet. We will not use it today, we will cover it furthermore later. This is the inspection panel. We will come back to it in a couple of minutes. Uh, this is the run uh, button. You can run a project locally. It will run from your computer, but we also have a cloud option where you can upload your bot and run it from our secure cloud. It involves costs and it involves also some adaptation that we will cover on another training. And finally, right here, uh, you have the configure uh, tab and or option. Uh, this will open up a new panel uh, where you can change the title, you can change the URL, you can here configure the multi-threading, some waiting, some timeout. You can also configure a couple of options that I will go through here uh, quite rapidly today. Uh, enable tab isolation will allow you to open multiple tabs and then locate the data, lock the data in between the tabs. Silent mode will allow you to run the automation without the browser appearing. So it will run in, in a sort of a background. Child project, project is an option that you can check right here so that you can import a project inside another project and benefit from uh, data sets, properties and commands that you already done before. Um, disable image loading. This is uh, when you want to go faster, you can have Artila not load the images of a website. Um, JavaScript is normally always enabled. You can also disable CSS loading to go faster, but then sometimes it breaks the website and the automation. Finally, if you want the, uh, if you are doing an automation that requires to transform JSON results into HTML, that's where you check this box so that when we get results from an API that comes in JSON and you want it in HTML, Artila can convert it for you right here. Um, these are very basics. Uh, the URL uh, input tab right here is, you can actually, we'll cover it also later. This is for mass scrapping. You can put a, a list of a thousand URLs that Artila will go through. You can also put the, the list of URLs in a file and import it right from here. You can import the URLs from a former project. Let's say you run an automation that was about collecting a bunch of URLs. So you can run them uh, by choosing the, 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 fir the former automation that collected those URLs. And finally, you can feed an XML sitemap and Artila is able to go through all the sitemap and load page by page with some, some rules and things like that. You have the proxies tab. The proxies tab, we have three uh, options. One is the built-in rotation 
system. We will cover it later on how you, you enter your, your proxies lines. There is a syntax to follow. You can also use uh, what we call a rotation API for, for a proxy. Some providers will give you that. We will cover it. Or you can import a list of proxies from a file. The scheduler is when you enable it, it will allow you to run an automation on schedule. So this is based on cron jobs. So you can say, I want to run this program or this automation every minute, every one hour, uh, you know, every week, once a week, or, or you want to run it every two hours, for example, here. Yeah. Or you can say, I'm going to run it every day uh, at uh, 10 a.m. And then it will, it will create for you the, the, the schedule. We will cover this also further uh, in another video. You have logs so that when you have a problem, you can see what happened and, and we can help debug. Uh, finally, we have a quick reports section. So when you have um, multiple types of data, Artila can build a simple graph, a simple chart. And you have these JavaScript actions. This is where, in some instances, for more advanced users, you may want to load or unload uh, some, some things, some JavaScript, some CSS from a page. This is where you get it done. So we have now covered uh, the options of configuration. And we still have one more uh, pan to go through, is the more options right here. So I will just also just a quick walk through. If you open this, you get here, you get the UI unique, uh, the unique ID for this particular bot. This is for uploading to the cloud so that you can get this unique reference that is needed for Zapier or needed for uh, using our cloud API. You have the profile session that you can select. You can actually run a project and piggyback on a, on a session. Let's say you logged in on LinkedIn or Facebook or something in another project. By loading the profile session of that project, you can piggyback on that session without having to log in again and again. We will cover that also more extensively on other trainings. And after that, you can, of course, delete the project right here. You can clone or export the project. So these are the main options you have. Uh, for managing the projects. Now, uh, what we will do uh, is that the next step is that we are going to create a project. We're going to do something very simple. So I'm going to move again my camera <coughs> right here. So to create a project, you have basically two options. One is that you can come here in new project and create and quick start. This is the easiest. So you just give it a name. Make sure that you give a unique name every time to your project. So I'm going to call this uh, my, my first project Google search. That's a title. And because I'm, I want to do it on Google, the URL I'm going to start the project with is Google. And that's it. Those are the two parameters you enter to start a project. Then you hit start. This creates the project and saves it for you. Now that we have the project, it's already uh, created. I'm going to close it. We will come back to it to do some automation later. But now you can see my project right here. My first project, Google, the URL, and I can go and, and change some settings. My project is created. This is one way of creating projects. You have another way of creating projects, which is, again, you go to new project right here, and you can import a file. So what I've done is that I imported the file that I got. You know, we have a marketplace with a lot of templates, which are actually projects that are saved for you so that you don't have to develop them from scratch. And what I took was the, um, we call it the three keywords, Google search. So I went here and I got this one, Google search three keywords, baby steps, which we use in another training. I downloaded the file. And then once you download the file, you come back into Artila right here. You click new project, import file. You go and get it from your download folder or wherever you, you have put it. So I think I've put it, yes, here. So I'll get it now loaded. And if I open it, it's going to load the project for me and add it at the top. So here is the project three keywords catch results. Let's look at it. I can open it here with the inspector. And I can uh, modify my commands that were done before. I can change the data set and so on and save. So this is the second way on how you create a project. You can import it and then start editing, edit, editing it. Okay, now that we covered the two ways of 
uh, of creating a project, what we're going to do right now is that we're going to do a first automation. That would be like your first basic automation. So I'm going to go back to the first project I created. So let me also delete the template that I just imported. I, I want my first project to be on the top, right here. So my first project, let's go back to it through the inspect. So inspect, the inspection panel is where you can build, edit, and, and, and uh, add automation and properties to a project. So you have to inspect it to modify it. So here we are, we have nothing. We don't have any uh, automation commands. We don't have any data sets. And if you notice right here, you have a tab to switch between the automation panel and the inspection panel, and you can switch back and forth. So usually uh, you, you can start with either or. In our case, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna start with the automation panel. I click here, I'm on the automation panel. And what I will use as a first easy way to create a, a first automation is the auto recorder right here. So I'm gonna record a couple of steps, which is a search in Google, and then it will record the steps for me and I can run it again. So let's start that and I'm gonna do record right here. I hit it, I go into Google and I search uh, temperature for Mauritius. I click enter, I hit enter. Okay, now I stop the recording. So you can see that Artila reproduced all the steps I took with the mouse, the hovering, the clicking, the populating the, the search field and entering uh, the enter key, pressing a, a keyboard key and even the wait time. And then I stopped it. So this is very basic and the auto recorder recorder doesn't catch everything 100% every time, but it's a good way to start an automation. So uh, what you have to do always is save. So I save this. And now what I want to do is I want to switch to inspection and I'm going to create a data set. We will cover the data sets and properties later in, in much more depth. But right now we're just creating a first project. So the only thing that I want to do right here is I want to capture the temperature, uh, which is the result of my search. So I'm going to create here a property. I call it temperature. And the way it works, and we will cover it really further on the next uh, onboarding session, is that I click the CSS selector input here, and then I will go and I want to click this, I highlight this field here, which has a temperature, and I click on it, and you can see that Artila has found the CSS locator. It has found one result, which is correct. There's only one result that I want over there. And then you can see the 23 degree appearing in my uh, results panel here, the preview of my results. You can toggle on, toggle off the preview. So if you want more space to navigate, you can disable the preview. Or if you want to see what data you're capturing or you're not capturing, then you can have uh, your properties showing up here. So I'm gonna save again this. And what you have to remember is that when you have a property and you want to save it, there is one command that you need on top of what I have done with the recorder, which is the extract results. So that is what I need to add now to make a complete automation. And now the extract result, what it will do is that it tells you Artila, once you go through all these steps, whatever is in the inspection panel on the page that, that will be there, that data, save it right now. That's what it does. So I save it and let's look at it. We're gonna run it. So now I'm on my project right here. I click the run button, I run it locally. It's gonna launch a, a new Chrome browser uh, instance. <coughs> and you can see it's gonna tap, whatever I did, it's gonna reproduce it. First, it reproduces the, the size of the window that I had. Then it types what I typed before. I displays 23 degrees, it saved the results, and it closed the project. So let's look now at the results. Once you run an automation, you can go to the results panel right here, and you will see here my first project. It got one result today at this time, and I can click preview right here. And I can see that I only have one result. It's the temperature of today. And if I want now, if I had hundreds of results or more, and I want to save them, I can export them into a CSV file, which I can open in Excel or Google Sheet. So these are the very basics. We just created the project. We edited it with the inspector. We extracted data, and then we, we have run it 
and then we have seen the results. These are really the, the very uh, basic uh, steps, including exporting the results. Um, now what, what we can do is that we can look at some other options which can, which can be useful for you when you're starting, which is about cloning and exporting a project and sharing it over with our support team or with other people who can help you with your automation. So in that case, what you do is that you come on your project right here. Uh, sorry, you go back to the project panel. And for your project, you can clone. Let's say you want to have different iteration. You don't want to lose former work. I could clone it and I click here in the hamburger and then I clone the project. It will create the same project with the mentioned copy in the title. You see here, it, it, ha it added the clone, sorry. So it, this is a clone. I can come back right here and I can change the name and I can call it MHD V2 because I want to do a, another variation. Then I save it, okay? And let's say I do some variations. For example, I remove my credentials or something before I share it. And now what I can do is that I can export this project right here. Again, I go to more options, hamburger menu, and I can export to an Artila file. So here again, it will open up and ask you where you want to save it, what file name you want. So I'm going to keep this uh, basic file name. I save it. And when you save it right here, what is important to do, because the .artila file is not known by all systems and it may look suspicious to some systems. So the best, especially when you share it on social media, email, is to uh, right click and zip it. Or if you have another uh, zip file, zip program and then share the zip file. So when you are asking for support by ticket or by email with, with the Artila team, um, don't share the Artila file, share the zip version of your Artila file. That will expedite and make things uh, all better. So I think we've covered this uh, first session, this second session about project management. Uh, I will let you uh, test and download uh, these projects and test for yourself and we see you on the next session. Thank you.